Welcome to Reread. We are on the last book in the Legacy of the Force series. This is Invincible. And I remember when I read the first joke about Jason, I closed the book, pinched my nose, and went, oh, no, they're going to do it. Because <laughs> the whole time you're thinking, surely they're not going to kill Jason. And I and still, I remember the first time reading it going, nah, they can't kill Jason. They won't kill Jason. He's done a lot of bad things, but he'll come around. They always do. You know, Jaina's thinking there may be good in him and whatnot. We can see an ending here. But the moment you read that quote, you know what they're going to do. And Troy Denning does this in every... At first, there are quotes from the book, which was good. And then Troy Denning starts making up his own jokes. And it feels tiresome after a while. And it's kind of crazy because I thought they were all quotes from Young J. Knights. And I believe, I, I know for a fact, some of those jokes were not, weren't even in Young J. Knights. Now, he does go back and talk about uh, uh, during a, a, a lost scene during lightsabers when Jaina was there for Jason when he was upset. And then another little brief interlude where uh, during, I believe it's the Bong War, one of Jaina's uh, uh, wingmates dies. And so she's upset and Jason comes and comforts her. And they, they're touching moments. And we're remembering the good old days when Jason was around. But now it's Darth Cadus. And we all believe this, too. Um, this book is just really good. It really is a great send off to the entire series. I mean, honestly, for me, I'm kind of wobbling when I get to Karen Travis's book. I'm like, mm, is this any good? And then, of course, Troy Denny makes it excellent. Uh, Jaina it gets sanctioned by the council to kill her brother uh, even, it, before, before they even ask her. But even though uh, and she's kind of shot, but they didn't want her to say, hey, we, the council, excuse me, didn't want Jaina to think, well, the council's ordering me to kill my brother. They they, they were going to go ahead and sanction it if Jaina was going to do it. And Jaina says she is going to do it. She sees no way around it. And of course, the Jedi sanction it. Now, it can't be Luke. They explain why. And I think it's a great explanation because he's you know, on the verge of tipping to the dark side. And he doesn't think he control his emotions. You know, killing the Maya the way he did, he came close. And he doesn't want to get any closer. In fact, in Luke's visions, he becomes dark if he kills Jason. And I love that because right now in the books, we've established that Luke is so much better than Jason. <laughs> in fact, Luke even reveals that he is controlling uh, Jason's vision. So Lord Cadus thinks he's seeing in the future, but Luke is controlling his visions. Luke is even more powerful than even Jason knew. And even though Jason has been beaten down like a dog every time he fights Luke Skywalker, he still thinks he has a chance. My one caveat is this. The first Twi'lek Jedi he killed was because he said, if she doesn't die, then Uncle Luke dies. So I must kill her. Okay. But how do we go from that to Uncle Luke, you know, Luke Skywalker must die? I guess because he's a Sith now? I don't know. It's kind of a, a weird way of thinking here. Um, but not not too too far off. Um, but the one, and, and, and in fact, when they fight, of course, Jason's going to get maimed. Uh, he's seeing a vision of Luke Skywalker fighting him, but it's not Luke, it's Jaina. He gets it mixed up. He, he still doesn't realize that Luke's messing with his visions. And uh, Jaina cuts off his arm. And then, which is really cool, he kind of splurts blood everywhere. Blood won't come off Jaina's arm, Jason's blood. And it finds out it's a it's an old uh, Dothmari witch uh, uh, force trick where you can throw blood on someone that won't go away and it acts as a tracker. Tracker, And that's how he finds out the secret uh, Jedi base, which I thought was really cool when they revealed that. I totally forgotten about that. Um, the first fight with Jane and Jason, because they have to, they both, it's a knockdown drag out fight. It's pretty good. In fact, it may be better than the last fight. I thought the last fight was a lot, I, I used to think the last fight was a lot more bigger, but it really isn't. In fact, the first fight is more brutal and more of a beat down than the second fight, uh, even though the book's still good. Uh, one thing, though, one thing I question, Tahiri, first off, she tries to seduce Ben or says she's going to seduce Ben before she tries to torture him. And then she tortures Shivu instead and accidentally kills him. Doesn't think she's going to kill him, but does. And then regrets killing him, which Ben thinks, oh, wait, there's good in her. I can save her. Just like a Skywalker trying his best to do, you know, the best he can for every human being in the world. Uh, everyone thinks the whole and I totally forgot about the Tahiri seducing him. All she does is put his you know, his, uh, her hand on his thigh and moves it up a little bit and goes, mm, maybe we can seduce it out of you. He's like, that's better than being tortured. You're like, wait, what? Ben's like 14 now. What's going on? And yet it is a little creepy. But uh, if you read the end of the book and you hear Ben going, I don't think Tahari wanted to torture me. She was just acting real weird and she doesn't want to harm me at all. So there is good in her. Now at the end, they kind of save her. I mean, she doesn't, she decides not to kill Ben. 
And, you know, she doesn't know what she's going to do. She doesn't think the Jedi, she's going to, you know, you know, uh, learn her lesson. She knows the council is going to put her in a prison maybe, or it's going to be a lot harder to forgive her. And uh, Ben goes, yeah, but they will forgive you is the thing. They will. And uh, to be honest, I can't, I do not recall what her, what her fate is. I'm sure fate of the Jedi will have her in it. I just don't remember now. Um, but I will say her whole path to the dark side, they really did a poor job. Now that it's unbelievable. Yeah. I believe that someone who was a former Vong tortured, you know, of course she wants to see Anakin. Jason makes her believe that she kissed Anakin. Maybe she did. It's still unclear. Jason goes, yes, you remember it, but it didn't change history, you know? And I'm like, well, did he change history or is this just like a fake memory? And still, it still was very unclear to me. Um, I'm not much for changing history and time travel. So flow, uh, flow walking is not my thing. And I know Troy Denning originally wanted to pull Anakin out from the past and bring him back to life, but that got shot down, thankfully. Um, don't need to see that. Where you can see the past, but not do anything about it. I like that better. I like that better. Um, but but anyway, so he tempts her that way, but she just goes from like, you know, kind of naive to full-on fledged Sith apprentice all of a sudden. I feel like we missed something. And I guess no one wanted to tackle Tahiri's fall from grace. Like I said, it's possible. It's definitely believable, but we don't see it. We see her kind of wobbling on the edge. Then all of a sudden she's willing to go out there and torture people and, and fight and, and knows that Jason is a Sith and is fine with that. Calls him Lord Cadus even. You're like, wait, wait, wait. Where'd she go from zero to hundred? Where'd that happen? I wanted to see that. You know, again, just a small complaint. Maybe someone could have written a short story. I don't know, but <laughs> I feel like there was there we should have seen more of Tahiri's fall than what we did. I mean, it was just like from you know you know naive to you know maybe Aunt, we can pull Anakin back. Maybe Jason keeps making that promise to her. Maybe she believes it. Maybe in her dreams she sees it. She wants it. But Jason's controlling her dreams. You know something like that. You know it's not I, again. It's very believable that Tahiri could fall to the dark side. But I need to know how. <laughs> the book just kind of skips over that, I guess. Anyway. Uh, Han is talking about Luke about <laughs> Han, Han has a great one liner when Luke gives his idea and Han goes, this is the worst idea. You know, this is the worst idea you've had since apprenticing yourself to a Palpatine's clone. <laughs> I love that dark empire reference. It was really good. And it's true. <laughs> that was a bad idea, Luke. Um, now, uh, Luke also can see the vision. We, we see really how powerful Luke is. Because now, not only does he control visions, he sees visions. I should have mentioned that all the while he's seeing someone who is Darth Krayt. They're slowly connecting the uh, Legacy book series here. But we're, we never hear it's Darth Krayt. In fact, Krayt, I don't think he's mentioned in this book at all. Now, I, I, I don't think he is, by name at least. Luke just sees someone, and we're it's, it's, it's hinted that it's him. But we also know that Luke can see the Force very clearly. Like he knew when he sent Ben on a mission, he knew Ben would get captured. He just knew that was the way it would happen. And Leia gets mad, like, why did you let him go if you knew he'd get captured? He went, I just knew that was the will of the Force. And everyone's mad at him. But, of course, Ben is able to escape with the help of Terry's cousins. Oh, no, no, Tenoka. Tenoka's cousins, excuse me, which are really funny. I'd forgotten about them. Um, kind of boy crazy, too, but that that that's what kind of makes him lovable. Uh, now, the other thing is that uh, Jason kills Princess Soldier because they, they had captured him as Ben escaped. And the reason Jason kills him is because the Moffs tell him about a plan about creating a nanovirus. They've already created one for Boa Fett. When he returns home to Mandalore, he'll die because they got some blood from Myrta, his uh, his uh, granddaughter. Well, Fett, of course, I, I, how this ends, Fett does not die. He gets the message that there's a nanovirus on Mandalore and there's nothing they can do to kill it. So he's, you know, the king who can't sit on his throne, who can't sit on the planet. I think they'd be fine by Fett. In fact, at the end, they don't really explain what Fett feels going on they just explain that and then that's it it's kind of a weird ending in fact there's other things happen uh zek gets shot down and no one knows what happened to him they didn't wrap that up and i'm kind of shocked because i thought they did <laughs> but no I, it was like the last four pages or something she's asking about him the prince goes we still haven't found him you know I'm like what when do you wrap this up <laughs> i thought they did but they don't it's, it's kind of a a weird ending, like to be continued, maybe, I guess. I, I know that the next two books don't cover it. Maybe Millennium Falcon. I don't know. Anyway, though, uh, the Moths want to create a nanovirus to go after Tenoka and her daughter. What they don't know is that Jason, that's Jason's daughter, too, and he didn't want anyone to know that. So he kind of shoots down the idea, but he says, I got to get a soldier out of here. So when he tries to let a soldier escape, 
the prince isn't believing Jason, right? Because he think he knows he's a Sith. He went, oh yeah, you're never gonna believe me. Oh well, I can kill you though. And he just twists his neck. I, I love the death. The death is horrible horrifying because Jason doesn't think anything of it. In fact, Jaina has already snuck on the Anakin solo at this moment and she's kind of following Jason's trail, hiding herself in the force. And she talks to a, a, a B1 unit, a, a medical droid and he goes, what happened? He says, well, there, you know, Lord Cadus went down to incinerate a body. He's a, that he killed. And he went, how do you know he killed him? And he goes, because he always kills them. That, that was kind of jarring, right? But it's just another remind reminder for Jaina to know that's not her brother anymore. But it's kind of weird that he's carrying the dead body of his, you know, kind of father-in-law. Kind of creepy. But uh, so she's going to attack him. There's a great scene where Jason goes to the uh, medical unit and says, hey, incinerate this immediately. And he's like, no, we need to take a tissue sample and identify him before he dies. Like, no, Jason doesn't want that, right? He doesn't want the moths to create a nanovirus. But the uh, so he overrides that command. And then the 2-1-B medical droid goes, oh, well, it doesn't matter because I see someone's already done it. And Jason goes, show, show me. And he sees the little needle imprint and realizes the moths who've been hiding something the whole time. Jason didn't know what it was, but it was that they've already created a nanovirus. Now, it's never explained who did. Um, at the end, Luke tries to question all the moths and they never really reveal who it was, which is kind of weird. I mean, we're hinted at who it could be, but uh, it seems like a lot of people were implicated in this. Either way, though, the moths in the nanovirus, Jason is going nuts. He's got a worn tentacle cock, so Alana won't die. But as he turns around, that's when Jason, I mean, that's when Jaina attacks him. And it says uh, Jason could spit vomit, uh, could, could vomit fire at that moment because he's so mad. This is the wrong time for this meeting. He does not have time. And it's true because now Jason is rattled. He's desperate to save Alana. He's got, he's got to have all his power to fight Jaina, but he can't. So that distraction actually works in Jaina's favor, who, by the way, all our Mandalorian skills, we... I don't really see where they, he does, he's not really surprised about Jaina's fighting skills ever. So we're never told that those, you know, Mando fighting skills, she worked so hard in the previous book, worked out well. Either way, though, she kills him as he's trying to send her a message to warn Alana about the virus. And then it pierces his heart and he dies. It's sad. It's sad. It's still sad. It's a great ending. In fact, Jaina's holding him, you know, just kind of, you know, holding her brother, you know, just mourning him. And it's a sad moment. And uh, I think uh, Jag is the first person to meet them. And she just kind of force blows them against the wall. But Jag, it says, being a brave man, <laughs> goes back and puts his hand on Jenny and goes, hey, come on, it's over. Let's go. You know, kind of snap out of it because she's mourning the loss of her brother. Now, I wish at that moment when she's about to, when she pierces his heart, would have been, now it's just me, but wouldn't have been great if she's driving the lightsaber in, it cuts to that pass, a, a, a scene from Young Jay Knights about the two of them just, you know, being friends, being always there for each other to, you know, Jason's heart getting pierced and the light going out in his eyes as he stares at his sister. And that's, I, that'd have been perfect. Yeah, I keep thinking now, now that I'm rereading the series, I'm like, you could have done better. <laughs> I, I want tears, dadgummit. <laughs> it was already touching, but I thought, oh, that'd have been great if they saved one of those flashbacks right before the end. <laughs> I'm just thinking like that. Overall, I still loved it. I mean, at the end, there's a funny scene where we think Alana's dead. We think the virus has killed everyone. It didn't. Tenoka, even though it did kill a lot of people, Tenoka was able to escape with her daughter. But she she says her daughter died. Now, in the very, I mean, the very last page, they were, I knew that she was alive, but they revealed to Jaina that, you know, she's back as their orphan, ad adopted orphan, you know. Um, I, Amelia, I think, is what they're, they're calling her. But uh, that way, Tenoka doesn't have to worry about people always trying to sa sacrifice or, you know, murder her or assassinate her daughter to control her. If her daughter's dead, then they don't think the queen has a, a weakness. And at the same time, they'll be safe with Han and Leia. And it makes sense that they would adopt a war orphan after mourning the loss of their son, Jason. And of course, a few years earlier, Anakin Solo. So everything makes sense here. And it's really great. And I know what Alana's going to do with the uh, Solos. And now she gets to be a regular character, which is going to be fun. And uh, so, it, but it kind of wraps up really quick. I mean, Troy Denning, like in the last two pages, just kind of goes, Zeke's still missing. You know, Fett can't go back on Mandalore. The Moffs, oh, there's a great scene where Han wants to kill one of them. And, he, and then the Jedi are not, he's like, aren't you Jedi going to stop me? And they go, no. And Luke goes, Han, if killing him is what, you, if, is what you need to do, then you may do it. And Han just looks at him and just realizes, no, it won't make me happy. But then also knows that Luke, is giving him time to figure that out on his own. And then Han goes, it may take more than one. And Luke goes, 
okay, how many do you think it'll take? And at that point, they're both kidding each other. But the moths don't know this. They're sweating. And Han just kind of looks it around at all the moths and goes, nah, too many. So too many to, for you to afford is what he said. He went, fine. So they have to turn tail and help Luke uh, kind of uh, put an end to the war. In exchange, Jagged Fail, a man without a mission, right? After he's killed uh, Al Marar, he has no other thing to do, gold to do in life. So he takes the reins as leading the empire, which I think is great. And they all agree to him because he's the son of Suter Fail, someone who's respected. And the Moth know the Moth knows he's a military uh, genius and can establish door to the empire. Jag's a great guy. Now he's been given a purpose. He accepts the mission. Uh, he, he, hits, he accepts the position to end the war. And of course, this sets up again. They're making connections to the legacy comic book, which they promised they would. And they still follow through to that promise with this series. Overall, I call this my second favorite series. And I still believe that. I still believe it was just a fun series. Had really great moments. There's some awesome moments in this. And, um, you know, I, it, was a, it was a great, it was a very smooth reread. A little rocky at the end, like I said, with Buffett and Tahiri's explanations being a little weak. Other than that, though, I enjoyed it as a whole. Good stuff. All right, folks, I'm not done. Still got more to talk about, but I'll see you next time.